Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. On today's quick sensor tutorial, I'll be showing you how to use the 5 volt laser module with the Raspberry Pi Pico or Pico W and MicroPython. By the end of it, you will have an example that looks just like this, where you will be able to programmatically turn on and off the laser module using some simple MicroPython code and some simple hardware, which I'll be walking through step by step from the hardware side of things to the code side of things. And you will get it all set up exactly like this by the end of today's tutorial. So I do not want to waste any of your time, guys. Let's jump into it and I'll show you the hardware and we'll talk about the connections followed by the code setup. Okay, so first things first, let's briefly talk about the hardware. And I'll do my best to try to explain this very quickly and succinctly. If you are still confused, I'll just link my blog down below, which explains the connections in more detail. But the important mechanism that we have to use today is this MB102 breadboard power supply, as you see here, or something that offers five volts because this laser module, actually what happens is that it can take 3.3 volts directly from the Pico W, but what you'll realize if it does take 3.3 volts, it'll be much dimmer than what it is and it'll be much less fun to use. So using this MB102 breadboard power supply, which you snap onto the breadboard here and we switch it to five volts and it powers this whole rail on the right here with five volts, which is going to feed into our device. Now in conjunction with that MB102, we're also using something called a transistor. So this transistor allows us to power the laser with five volts, while at the same time allowing us to control it with the GPIO pin of the Raspberry Pi Pico W, which operates at 3.3 volts. So it gives us the control, but at the same time, it gives us that strong power to the laser module, which the Raspberry Pi Pico W cannot supply. And, and on top of that, we're, we are also using a 330 ohm resistor connected to the GPIO pin of the Pico W, as you see here. And that's just for best practice reasons and to avoid overcurrent to the GPIO pin, okay? So we see you have the MB102 that is, that is plugged in with a direct current cable and you could just turn it on and off like this. So you could just turn it on and off just like that. And ignore the laser on for now, my code is not running. Once we, once we run the code, it should flash on and off. So you can see you can easily use the MB102 to turn it on and off and power the rails. And I am just connected to the Pico W to my computer with a cable. So I'm just connecting it directly. A little messy, but really you don't need this cable. Once you have something on your device, you can use this device as a standalone. You don't need this cable anymore. You can connect it directly to the MB102. So yeah, in terms of our actual jumper wires here. So we have one jumper wire from the Pico W ground pin to the ground of the power rail. We have one jumper wire from the, the, the first GPIO pin of the Pico W, which is the first pin to the resistor here. And this connects to the middle pin of the transistor. So a transistor is three segments, E, B, C. The B is in the middle there. So that's called the base. So the GPIO is connected to the base. It essentially acts as a bridge to whenever you trigger that GPIO pin, it'll turn the laser on. So that's the, the mechanism that it's operating under. And other than that, for the for the laser, what you see here is we're using these alligator jumper wires, which are pretty cool. So these alligator jumper wires are nice because the leads of the laser are kind of, they're fray leads. So just to make it easier for beginners, you can just use these alligator jumper wires to snap onto them. So I have one for power and I have, I'm using the other one for ground as you see right here. So that's just in the back there. And the other end is just, is just breadboard compatible. So the, the power side of the laser goes to the five volt rail. And then the ground side of the laser goes to the, the C. So that is the, the C pin on the transistor. So if you're looking at the flat face, the C pin is all the way to the right. And other than that, the last pin we have here is the emitter pin on the transistor. And that is connected to a common reference point, which is just this ground pin here. And that is just the, the ground of the, of the power rail. Now, What's interesting about these power rails is they are labeled red and blue. So don't get that confused here because in this case, they are the opposite. You see on, on the right side here on the MB102, this is actually the, the power side and this red side is actually the ground side. So just because the way these breadboards are structured and the way I oriented the breadboard is it's actually flipped. So don't get that confused. The, this, this row is the is power and underneath is the ground for the, for the power rails. And that's pretty much it in terms of all the connections. Now, if you are confused, let me know in the comment section down below. And I'll also explain this in much more detail in my blog, which I'll link, it's free for you guys to read. And once you have all these components and you just connect them like this, 
you can jump into the code, which I will explain right now. Very simple code, which just turns this laser on and off. So we'll talk about the code and we'll show this thing turning on and off. Okay, so last thing, we just want to write our simple code. So go ahead and jump into a Thani editor. Make sure you have MicroPython on the device and you could just create a Python script with this content here. All the script is doing is, is just initializing that GPIO pin on the Pico W or Pico and it is just setting the value to one to turn the laser on and then it waits a second and then it turns it off and then it just repeats the cycle in this while loop until you turn this code off. So let's go ahead and run this script and you'll see that the laser module starts to flash every second as expected. So I hope you got it working and I hope if you got up to this point, you learned something new. If you did, please consider liking, subscribing, or commenting on the channel. Also, if you have any questions, I know we went over a lot for the beginners in terms of hardware components. So let me know in the comment section down below. Once again, I will link my blog, which has the code, the, the specific components that I bought and all the details to help you if you are confused. So I hope that helps guys. Stay tuned, thanks for watching and I will see you on the next tutorial.